Hi, it's Matt here. I'm just going to do a quick video on rentals and getting a good deal out in Cebu. I wouldn't say rentals have a, a fixed price and I won't say that they're actually working on any guidelines. It, most of it is just made up. Um, you can get the same property, I mean literally the same property for like 3000 or 10000 depending who you are when you ask and who you ask. Um, that's just an example, but I mean, I know the properties near me went for 11,000, but I was renting one for 5,000 a month. And pretty much the market is dictated to by the buyer, not by the people wanting to rent the properties out. The reason being is the Philippines has a, a strange property boom. Um, there's a lot of properties that are just sat empty. Um, why? I don't know. It could be, I mean, it, there's a big investment boom, um, BS, that went around the globe and the Philippines hasn't had its bubble burst yet. So that's probably part of it. Um, other parts being people investing um, for their retirements because it's something they can pay monthly. Um, so. There's different reasons, but either way, there's more properties than there is people that can afford to rent them. Um, so one of the things I recommend is if you visit subdivisions, you can talk to the guards and the guards will actually tell you if there's somebody that actually deals with the properties. Um, you can get a good deal in a subdivision or you can get an overpriced property. It, it's, it's really hit and miss on what you get. Uh, it just takes a bit of time of hunting around. I wouldn't look for something online, um, primarily because they're overpriced and there's, they're mainly parasites um, like uh, fake real estate agents and things advertising other people's properties, sticking hefty fees on top. Um, with, you know, like maybe the owner only wants five thousand, but they'll say, "Oh well, I can get it with we charge twelve thousand a month." So things like that, notorious. Um, but generally, if you can get hold of the owner direct, speak to them direct, and don't accept the first price. Um, they're going to try and get the best price possible out of you. And, um, what, I, what I try to do is I'll see what they'll work with. Um, say they wanted um, 20000 I would offer like twelve, and then uh, just look to walk away if they weren't interested. If they are interested, they're going to ask you for your telephone number and they would like to text you on the way home or whatever, trying to negotiate a better price. Um, it's pretty common here to pay two months up front plus a deposit. And um, most places you would struggle to get your deposit back. Um, what, what, what I find most people do from what I, my own experiences is that they just let the deposit and the uh, month adva months advance expire rather than take it, uh, give you it back as a lump sum. Some may do it where they actually hold the money to the last minute and give it to you, but others, they just let it run out because um, it's easier for them, I suppose, where they, they've already spent the money and just let, letting, the, letting you spend that lease time. Um, which is why it's worth letting them know in advance because you then have none of the issues that you have in the UK where it's near impossible to get your full deposit back because there's always um, something where they withhold some of your money. So um, that that is basically uh, getting a property um, contract. I've never signed one. Um, I've been quite lucky with the people I deal with, that they're, that they're people and not corporations. Um, I'm sure corporations have all these lease agreements um, with lots of uh, lots of bits and pieces which may give me more legal headaches than I need. But generally people um, have houses available because so many people are abroad. Uh, how I would approach that is you'll find a lot of posts as you're driving around or walking around with telephone numbers like house for rent, blah, 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 with a telephone number. 
they may have been up there a few years, but what I what I would do is actually give them a call, or I would look to actually talk to the people in that area. Now, they may end up with an extra uh, few pesos in their pocket as a finder's fee, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter if they get you a better deal than you would get somewhere else. The answer to that is no, because um, it's actually doing you a favor. So that's the cheapest way of getting things done. But when you first arrive in the country, what I would do is just book a, a day or two in a hotel, then spend the, spend the two days searching around to get a, um, get a property to stop in. Uh, if you're here long term, it's more negotiable. Um, if you're only here for a few months or a year, the, the prices um, can be uh, a little bit higher, but at the same time, if the property is sat empty, then there you, you put you put it forward as well. I'm only here for three months. You're probably not going to rent it in those three months. Would you rather have an empty property or somebody paying something? And you know those it's just working a bit of manipulation to get somebody to accept the deal. But property is generally cheap anyway. Um, Besides that, I can't really, I can't really say um, it's difficult to get properties. They're not to the same building standard. That's an important thing. Um, generally, the quality is uh, pretty poor. Even if they have good builders, they have uh, a lot of the stuff is bad um, equipment. You know, it's Chinese cheap toilets and stuff which are low quality. Um, I'm glad to see that things like Wilcon are opening up, though. They're actually bringing better quality stuff. Still too much plastic on some of the fittings, but it's a start. You know, having a toilet bowl that's actually built for somebody um, more than five foot tall would be nice. Um, and I, that's what we've been installing here this year. Um, the toilets before overpriced and crappy, but the, the ones we had this year cost about, uh, about 100 pounds each complete with a sink and everything. Does the job and they're, they're more European size. But yeah, finding a rental place isn't hard here. Um, I would say pick your places um, because if you're looking for somewhere in the IT park, you're going to find the rents are higher, but also um, it might be better to commute there. If you can find something that's on a jeepney route, um, then you're very likely to get something, A, maybe a third of the price, but B, it's going to be um, a bit more quiet than living in the IT park, um, a bit more rural. Uh, it all depends what you want, but properties are readily available. Um, can't really say much else to uh, on this video because that's simply rentals. They're Rent-wise, I've seen people living in houses that cost one and a half thousand pesos a month, which is basically a, a shack with a tin roof and little cocoa lumber, um, cocoa lumber frame. Uh, no real security, but it's people, they're happy living there. Because um, if you're out all the time, you only really want somewhere to throw your your bag anyway. So. For them, that was that was fine. Um, I've had friends have subdivision houses which are like twenty five thousand a month. Um, they're not fantastic, but the they're like four bedroom houses, more in a European style, um, better quality toilet fittings, um, secured with uh, two guards, and it's inside an enclosed compound. So those areas, okay, they're a bit more secure, um, cost a lot more in rent, but even then you can sometimes find people that just want to rent them out to somebody they trust if they're going abroad. Um, because one of the headaches here is things depreciate rather quickly when you're away. Um, I mean, we, even if you're here, um, I find things fall apart a lot faster than they should, or you start to see pain crack and things like that. A lot more often, um, stuff that you would expect in like five to ten years, you might see every year here, 
Um, I think the earthquakes help with it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, but rent-wise, if you're looking for a two-bedroom house, you're probably looking at around six to twelve thousand. If you're looking for a four-bedroom house um, outside the city, um, maybe uh, maybe like ten thousand. But if you the further south you go, um, you know the more remote it goes, the cheaper things get. Um, but also, the further you get, the cleaner it gets, because um, there's less population, so there's less garbage in the rivers. Um, I mean, I, I like going south here, because once you get to a certain point, uh, it's like cool air starts hitting you, um, green green trees everywhere. Um, the rivers actually flow and look clean, and it, it's the sort of environment that you want to be in. Um, but it all depends on your internet and other stuff because some of these places still struggle for good internet. I mean, if you're here on holiday, I would head, head as far away from the cities as possible, um, unless you like sitting in a hotel or something. But yeah, the for rentals, it, if I was going to rent something, it would probably be further south. Um, from here, I would go from Argo and further south from Argo onwards. Um, where it's a bit cleaner and less populated, and it just looks a lot nicer. It's it's more like you would see on a postcard rather than um, a disaster relief video. Um, I mean that's a bit extreme, uh, but it, it it is completely two different tangents. Um, one one's in industrialized and one is like a farming community, completely different. Uh, so, yeah, that's the rentals. Okay.